So we did a thing. Boom, I present to you a puppy. This is Winnie, the four month old Aussie doodle. She's our new companion, best friend. Look how cute she is. She also might be a guest host in these videos. Who knows? Today, I'm showing you guys my top five favorite knives out of my 400 plus knife collection. This video is brought to you by House of Blades, more on that later, and if you're interested in seeing more knife content, then hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon now. And before I show you guys these five super special knives, I wanna give those of you guys that are new a little bit more of a background story and where I kind of started out. I've been collecting premium knives since 2019, and at this point, I have over 400 knives in my knife collection. And before you go into the comment section, I know I need to do do a knife collection video, but like 400 knives, I don't even know. That would have to be like a 10 part series. And I don't know if I'm down for that. So if you're interested in seeing that, I guess hit that like button. And if there's enough likes, then I might do it. Regardless of that, I've handled thousands of knives and these are the top five that have stood out for me so far in my collection journey. Now, as I'm showing you guys these knives, they're not gonna be in any particular order except the very last one. But let's not waste too much of your time and start off with this guy, the Benchmade Anthem. Now I've had this knife since 2021 and I just really wanted to reward myself after 10,000 subscribers. Subscribers, so I went ahead and got the Anthem. At the time, this was one of the most expensive bench maids on the market in the blue class range. The official model number of it is the 781. And the reason why I put this on my list for top five favorite knives of all time is because it's a titanium integral with a crossbar or axis lock. On top of that, it's using 20 CV premium steel. This thing has a really cool chevron pattern milled into the handle as well as this other pattern up top. And what makes the Anthem super special is it has a different type of axis lock locking mechanism. This thing is using a coil spring instead of an omega spring, so it just sounds and feels amazing to open and close. I'll go out there and say it right now, the 781 Anthem is the very best Benchmade ever produced in my opinion. And unfortunately, the Anthem is discontinued nowadays, so I can't really recommend it to you guys unless you get it on the secondary. And even at that, it's probably gonna be double to triple the price. All right, moving forward is gonna be the Chris Reeve Knives Umnum Zon in Magna Cup Blade Steel. Now, I've owned several different variants of the Umnum Zon, and this is by far my most favorite one so far. And the reason being is because I absolutely beat the hell out of mine. Whether it's cutting zip ties, if it's in the pocket with keys and stuff like that, it's getting snail trails. I have gone ahead and upgraded mine with an aftermarket backspacer and pocket clip. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a bunch of dust on this thing. I mean, I have to clean this thing probably once every month. But I just absolutely adore this knife because it's a really good workhorse. I can really depend on this knife. It has a really nice sharp hollow grind. That Magna Cup blade still is extremely corrosion resistant, so I don't really have to worry about it rusting. And it's been able to hold an edge. This is still the factory edge. All I've done to it is probably stropped it a couple times. And it's still razor sharp. Now, the only things that I really don't don't love about the Umnum Zon are gonna be this glass breaker here. I mean, I guess that could come in handy if I ever do get in like a car accident and I have to break a window, but it's kind of unnecessary and it is a little bit sharp. And then the learning curve of actually deploying this knife. If you have ever handled one of these knives before, it's not as easy as just one, two, three flick. You literally have to train your hand in order to get this thing deployed and flick it out like that. I've just done it thousands of times at this point with the various models that I've owned and I still really dig it. I mean, now at this point, it's just super easy to get this thing deployed. But again, there is a steep learning curve. So just opening it up, you might have to build some thumb calluses or get that muscle memory down. Give it some patience and you'll love the knife, I promise you. And before we move on to the next knife, let's give a quick word for today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by House of Blades, a close channel partner of Everyday Minimalist. They're a dealer located in Fort Worth, Texas and have one of the coolest shops that I've ever had the privilege to visit. But let me tell you why you should get your next knife or any EDC item at House of Blades. First off, they stock some of the most popular brands that you may have heard of like Benchmade, Spyderco, ZT, Kershaw, Wee Knives, Chris Reeve Knives, and Koenig, and a bunch of others. The second thing is they're actually hooking us all up with a really cool discount. So if you use code EDM on checkout, that will get you 10% off your entire order. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below. That doesn't cost you anything extra. Just click on that link and then just go browse. The third thing is if you want to really personalize whatever products you get from House of Blades, you can. Just shoot them an email or give them a call and send over your files to them and they can actually laser engrave whatever you want onto pretty much any product that they offer. Trust me, I've been to that laser engraving room and 
and those lasers are absolutely insane. I absolutely love and trust House of Blades and without them, I wouldn't be able to do what I do here on YouTube. So thank you for that. And of course, thank you to all of you guys watching this ad, but let's get back to the video. Next up is this guy, the Koenig Mini Arius. And in my opinion, this thing is gonna be better than the full size Arius. I can say that because I've owned an Arius and sold it off and now we have this one. But I got this last year at Blade Show West 2023 and this is a little bit more of a special variant. It's sporting an M390 blade along with this really cool C pattern milling pattern on the show side and lock side scales. This thing is just like the full size Arius. It's just a dream to flip and fidget with. And then of course it does still perform pretty well. Now there is a thing with this knife. When I originally purchased it and pulled it out of the box, it was not hair popping sharp. I was pretty disappointed about it. You guys can probably watch back on the stream when I actually showed you guys how sharp it was. It wasn't able to cut Uline foam book paper or anything like that. So I just fixed that by stropping it a bunch of times. And at this point it is hair popping sharp. This knife is on the list because of its ergonomics. It's extremely lightweight. It's super fun to fidget with. And there's a couple different ways to deploy the knife itself. I absolutely dig the mini areas and this will be a knife that probably will stay in the collection for a good long time. Next up we have this bad boy, the Blah Rock Blades BRB4. Now this is an absolutely insane knives. I'll show you guys a bunch of the different features here in just a second, but I got this one back in 2023 at Blade Show Atlanta. This knife is manufactured by a single guy in Germany out of his garage with his own CNC mill. And what makes this one super special is it has this milling pattern on this Tonto blade. Let me see if I can show you guys this, but it is a compound grind. So you've got a compound hollow grind here with a flat grind towards the tip. And it's just super interesting on how it was machined. On top of that, I've never really seen a knife with a pivot design like this one. Now it does require a special tool or a pair of needle nose pliers to really adjust that pivot. Basically there's a milled out pattern that has a perfect fit with skiff bearings inside this thing. So it's just extremely drop shutty. This is probably one of the most drop shutty knives in my entire collection and it's so good to fidget with. It's also extremely lightweight because there's a bunch of milling pockets within the scales. And then this guy is made with RWL 34 blade steel. And let me quickly show you guys the backside here. This pocket clip is absolutely amazing. It fits in the pocket really well. It's not necessarily deep carry, but at this point in my knife collecting journey, that doesn't really matter to me too much. And there's a lanyard hole here above the pocket clip in which I don't really use because I like to keep a really clean overall aesthetic. This is also one of Ashley's favorite knives. And if you just look at it, I mean, the overall silhouette just looks absolutely badass. I've had a lot of you guys offer me extreme amounts of money for it. And every single time I say no, because it's such a special knife. So I told you guys to wait until the very last knife. And there's a reason why it's because this is my most favorite knife of all time. That's going to be none other than the Oz Machine Co. Roosevelt. I personally have the golf putter milling pattern with a hand satin blade that was done with the previous owner. But the reason why I love this knife so much is because of the overall silhouette. It just looks absolutely sexy, especially with that milling pattern. And then of course, ergonomics and action, the way it carries in the pocket and how slicey it is. And this just might be one of the best EDC knives you can possibly get your hands on. Now, not everyone's going to have a thousand dollars plus to spend on a knife, but if you did, I mean, God, the, the Rosie is just absolutely insane. Now, this one was actually gifted to me from my little brother, Balin. Shout outs to him because again, this is like literally my most favorite knife ever, which means I guess because it was a gift, I'm never going to sell it. But if I had to drop a thousand dollars 10 times over, I would do it in a heartbeat. That's how good this knife is. And because I don't intend on selling this knife, I've actually been using it a ton. As you guys saw, we just got a new puppy and there's a lot of puppy toys. And for some reason, all those puppy toys come with zip ties. So I've been just using the hell out of the Rosie to cut open those puppy toys and other, I guess, puppy gear. Mine is number 1307. It's got Magna Cut blade steel. And regardless of the durability, this is just such an easily pocketable knife. It's really rectangular. So for some reason, when I do put it in the pocket, it doesn't really get in the way of things. And then that milling pattern just hides away scratches like it's nothing. This thing still looks like it's brand new unless we're counting the pocket clip itself, which I can actually just replace. And the Rosie is just my number one pick out of any knife I've ever handled. That might change in the future. It probably will. But for now, it's my most favorite knife ever. But there you guys have it. My top five favorite knives that I've ever owned and handled. And I guess that's as of March of 2024. This is probably going to be changing in the future. But in terms of right now, every single one of these knives is an absolute banger. You guys can probably tell that I have a little bit of a size preference here on the right hand side. But yeah, I want to know what are your guys' top five favorite knives? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll take a look at those. And aside from that, thank you guys so much for dropping by.
Bye, and we'll have to catch you on the next one. Peace out.